Hello everyone from Math 2200. It's um, discrete mathematics. It's Professor Wenson here again with a video on your Zybooks section 6.4 titled Compositions of Relations. So you've already seen in an earlier chapter compositions of functions. Uh, this really is no different. You're going to have two mappings to relations and uh, you know, compose them, meaning you apply one relation and then take the output of that uh, the output and then you know, apply the next relation to it. So you're going to have an element of one set map to an element of another set and then take that and you know map it to an element of another set uh, through composition, just like with functions. Okay, uh, so again, there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between directed graphs and binary relations in that the arrow diagram for a binary relation is a directed graph. Similarly, the edge set of a directed graph defines a binary relation on the set of vertices of that graph. If a directed graph G has a walk of length K from vertex A to vertex B, then what does that say about the binary relation corresponding to G? All right, before defining the counterpart of a walk in a binary relation, we need to first define the composition of two relations. All right, the composition of relations R and S on a set A is another relation on A, denoted S composed with R. Again, you've seen this notation before, the little O thing for composition. So the pair A comma C, this ordered pair, belongs to the relation S composed with R if and only if there's a B belonging to set A such that A maps to B in R and B maps to C in S, right? So A would map to B in R, and then you move on to the next one over, and then B maps to C in, in, in set S, uh, in relation S. So then A maps to C in S composed with R. All right, so the ordering of the relations R and S in the expression S composed with R may seem unusual, because it is natural to read an expression from left to right, but you know, you're going right to left. All right, the ordering defined here for composition of relations is consistent with the order ordering defined for composition of functions, as I've mentioned. You've seen composition with functions, uh, in which R is applied first, right, the one on the right, and then you keep going left, right, and then, then relation S is applied. All right, so they have an animation here where I'm not going to play the animation, I'll, I'll leave that to you. But here, you know, you have this set A uh, with elements A, B, C, and D. Here's relation R on set A, so you see A maps to D, uh, B maps to itself, also to C, so you have B comma B, B comma C in relation R. C maps to D, so you have you know, C comma D, uh, and D maps to C, right? So you have D comma C. <clears throat> then S, you know, A doesn't map to anything. B maps to A. B also maps to D. Uh, C doesn't map to anything. And D maps to C, right? So then if you're looking at S composed with R on this same set A on elements A, B, C, and D. So first I apply R, <clears throat> right? So A, C, you know, in R, A maps to D, and then I apply S to D. D maps to C, so in this composition, A maps to C. You see in that arrow here. Do the same thing, apply R first, let's do it to element B. Now there's two, uh, two mappings from B, so we gotta do this twice. So you see B maps to B in R, and then B maps to D in S, so then B would map to D in S composed with R. 
Also, B maps to C in R, but then in S, uh, C doesn't map to anything. So you don't have any extra mappings of B to anything in S composed with R. Uh, here, C maps to D in R, D maps to C in S, so then C ends up mapping to itself, see the self loop here, in S composed with R. And finally, D maps to C in R, and C doesn't map to anything in S, so D doesn't map to anything in S composed with R. Right? So again, it's just like functions, just like composing functions, you apply the, you know, the, the relation on the far right first, and then you keep applying the relations as you move left. And you can read through all this, play the animation. All right. So, for example, all right, let's keep these pictures up. Let me pull up a piece of paper. Nah, that's blocking too much. All right. So I'm gonna, I'll redraw these. And then I'll show you how I would draw, you know, R composed with S, S composed with R, right? And, and again, you'll notice that just like with composition of functions, the order in which you compose relations uh, will matter. Okay, so I've redrawn those uh, relations on a set A here. The set A is, you know, the set with elements A, B, C, and D. So we see I have a relation R over here. Now R, remember every relation is just a subset of some Cartesian product. You know, so A cross A. Um, so it's a set of ordered pairs. So we see in, in set R, relation R, we have A maps to B. So I have the ordered pair, you know, A comma B. And that's all A maps to. And then we have B mapping to C. B comma C, and that's it. And C doesn't map to anything. And D maps to A. So I have ordered pair D comma A. So relation R you know, only has these three elements in it, these three ordered pairs. And then S, relation S over here on the same set, the set with elements A, B, C, and D. I am seeing a self loop, right? So A maps to A, so A comma A. B maps to, well, B maps to C, right? B comma C. And B also maps to D, right? We have B comma D, and that's it. Right? Again, there's only three three arrows here, just like in this one. So the, the relation only has uh, three ordered pairs, three elements. All right, so first I'm going to make S composed with R. Right, S composed with R. And this will be another relation, so it's going to be another set of ordered pairs on this set with elements A, B, C, and D. Or I'm going to apply R first, and then apply S. And you go right to left with composition. So I'll apply R first. Now let's look at what element A does. So see, element A maps to B in R, and then in S, B maps to two different things. So that means when I compose them, do one and then the next one, we're going to have A mapping to B mapping to D. So we have A mapping to D, but also we'll have A mapping to B, which maps to C. So you also have the ordered pair A mapping to C in this uh, S composed with R. All right, so those are the ordered pairs that are going to start with A. Now again, I'm applying R first. So let's see which ordered pairs start with B in this composition. So I see B maps to C in R, which doesn't map to anything in S. So we're at a dead end. Uh, so in the composition, B doesn't map to anything. All right, B maps to C, but then C doesn't go anywhere. So I have no ordered pairs starting with uh, first component B. Uh, then you know C and R doesn't map anywhere, so I'm at a dead end already with C. So you don't have any ordered pairs in S composed with R that start with C. And finally D, 
Now D maps to A in R, and in S, A maps to itself. So we have D mapping to A, which then maps again to A, so in total we have D mapping to A in S composed with R, and that looks like about it. Right, and if I were to draw a picture of this, right, so here's, a, here's a graph, a directed graph for S composed with R. So I'll draw the same elements that we had up there. The set A is uh, the elements, has the elements A, B, C, and D. And I'll do this in a, in a different color. So S composed with R has A mapping to D, A mapping to C, and D mapping to A. And that's it. There's the graph for S composed with R. In, in, you know, again, you're going right to left. You apply R first and then apply S. So let's do that again. <clears throat> but this time, let's do R composed with S. Now you could also do S composed with S, R composed with R. You know, you could do three of them, have S composed with R composed with S. You know, I'm not going to go crazy here. But you could, you could compose these relations and do as many compositions as you wish. I'm just sticking to two of them. Right. So we did S composed with R. Now let's do the other way around. Let's do R composed with S. So again, the way you read this, you know, the way you apply is you apply S first, then R. So I'm going to look at the right picture first, then the left picture. All right, so let's check out A. See if any ordered pairs start with A. So I apply S first. So A maps to A in S. A maps to A in S. And then what does A map to in R? To B. So A maps to A, which then maps to B. So in total, A maps to B. So we have the ordered pair A comma B in this R composed with S relation. And that'll be the only one that starts with A. Uh, how about B? Now, look at this. You know, B has two arrows coming off it, uh, so we might have two different ordered pairs with B here. So I apply S first, right? So let's do the one with B to C. So B maps to C in S. But then in R, C doesn't go anywhere. So we're at a dead end. Uh, B doesn't map to anything in that direction in R composed with S. How about the other arrow? Right? Now we see B maps to D in S, and D maps to A in R. So B maps to D, which then maps to A, so B maps to A in R composed with S, so B comma A. And that would be it, because you know C in S doesn't map anywhere, D here in S doesn't map anywhere, so that's it. Just those two ordered pairs would be in the, the relation R composed with S. And can you see that this is not the same as S composed with R, right? S composed with R had those three ordered pairs, totally different, totally different elements, totally different ordered pairs. And that's going to happen in general, right? Uh, the, the, the order matters, right? Order matters. when you compose, just like with functions, right? Just like with functions, the order that you compose relations in, in matters. All right, and then I'll make a graph, a right, directed graph. Now, this is a very simple one. There's only two ordered pairs in here. And we got elements A, B, C, and D. And I'll pull out a, a little different color, maybe this brown color here. And we see that in S compose, I'm sorry, in R composed with S, A maps to B, and B maps to A. And that's it. There's R composed with S. Again, you can tell they're different, right? S composed with R had this digraph. R composed with S has this digraph. Totally different picture. All right, so hopefully that was easy enough. I just got to pay attention to what order things come in and and follow follow the trails, follow the paths to see where one element in the set maps to in the composition.
All right, so would A comma D belong to S composed with R? Well, we are, yes, we already found that, right? So yeah, so, see A goes to B and R, and then B goes to D and S, so A, A, D, A to D would be an S composed with R. Uh, is B comma D an S composed with R? No, right, I already found those. You know, B goes to C, but then C doesn't go to anything, right? Uh, so you can answer the last two. All right, so here's the challenge. <coughs> challenge activity here. And I think that's it. So a pretty simple section, pretty short one. So here we're given the relation V below and I use ordered pair notation to express the relation V composed with V. V composed with itself. So I apply V right and then I apply V again. All right, so let's start with A, element A. So in V, now there are three arrows coming off of A here, so I gotta look at all three look at all three. So we've got A mapping to A and then mapping to itself again if you want to use the two loops. So I do have the ordered pair A, comma A. Alright, and then comma. And then the next order pair. Now I have A again just applying V twice. I have A mapping to A which also maps then to B. So I have A comma B as well. Right. Then another ordered pair. A maps to A, and then apply V again, you know, you have A mapping to C. So A maps to A, which maps to C. So in V composed with V or V squared, um, you have A comma C. And that's really all for, you know, those, those are all the ones that can start with A, right? There's only these three elements. All right, so let's look at B. Uh, B doesn't map to anything. So uh, no ordered pair can start with B in V, com uh, v composed with V. So how about C now? All right, C maps to B, which doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> All right, C maps to B, but then you apply it again, B, B doesn't go anywhere. So you're stuck. So C doesn't map to anything in V composed with V. So there are only these three ordered pairs. Right? So in, in uh, V composed with V, you'd have A mapping to A, A mapping to B, A mapping to C. Right, they don't draw a picture, but you could. Right. And then you got the four levels. Let's see what the last level looks like. All right, so here's U. There's a relation U on elements A, B, C, and D. And then here's a picture of relation V on elements A, B, C, and D. And you're doing V composed with U, right? So you're applying U first, then V. And stating what ordered pairs would be in the relation V composed with U. Pretty simple, almost exactly what I did in the, on, the, on the picture I did on, on, a, on that paper that I had. So this shouldn't be the toughest section in the world. All right, and then you have your additional exercises. Again, some of these are assigned, some of these are not on your assignment seven. I would still recommend looking at all of them uh, just to get more familiar with the material, get more practice. And of course, you can you know look at the solutions and see how you're doing. Of course, don't don't look at the solution before you work on it. All right, try working them out. Try figuring these things out on your own first, and then look at the solutions to you know see how you did. Because you're not going to learn anything if you're just looking at the solutions and copying them down. Right. Uh, yeah, uh, th this one here you know has some relations on set you know the set of all real numbers, so you're not going to be able to draw a picture for this one. But you could still you should still be able to describe the compositions. And, yeah. All right, so hopefully this was a decent enough guide for you for 6.4. Probably not the hardest thing ever, right? You know, like I said, you've seen composition before. Now it's just with real general relations instead of, you know, specific functions. And, of course, if you have any questions, send them my way. Let me know. And thank you very much for watching.